Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for House Made, and today this is your ultimate video guide to wiring up a 220 three-phase motor to a VFD. And this VFD is magical. It does a few things. It will run on either 220 single phase, or get this, 110 single phase, and it will upscale the power, variable speed power, to 223 phase. We're gonna do that right here. And we're gonna show you what supplies you need to make this happen, where to get them, the tools that you need, and how simple and easy this is. All right, so just follow along. I'm gonna take it nice and easy and slow. I get this question all the time about motors and VFDs, and it seems intimidating until you watch this video, and then you're gonna go, wow, that is easier than I thought it could ever be. All right. Let's get started. First and foremost, let's go over some of the supplies and tools that you're gonna to need to make this happen. Obviously, you need your motor and your VFD. Uh, the motor I'm using here is the Iron Horse two horse motor. And because we're building a system for a two by 72 bell grinder, the rule of thumb is for every inch of width on the belt that you're turning, you're gonna want one horsepower. So the belt is two inches wide and we want two total horsepower to make that work. This iron horse motor is available through Automation Direct. I'm gonna put a link down in the description. There are numerous versions of this though that are available from other vendors, okay? So you don't have to just get it from Automation Direct. Again, it's a 220 three-phase motor, two horsepower, okay? And in this particular case, because we want to bolt up to the Revolution grinder, it's a 56C face mount. Okay, the shaft is 5 8 inch in diameter and the, uh, there's a standard keyway. So th that gives you any indication of the motor that you should be looking for. All of this information, by the way, is on my website, housemade.us. We have a resources page where you can go there and you can look through all of the recommendations that I have for motors, links, VFDs, all this data is available to you if you've purchased into the Revolution project. So. Uh, that's the motor. Second thing you're going to need, obviously, is the VFD. The VFD we're going to be wiring up today is the KBAC 27D. It's made by KB Electronics. It's made right here in Florida, where I am, actually, right across the alley from me. And it's an excellent piece of technology. This is an analog version of this. There's different types of versions. There's digital and all kinds of things. I prefer a knob. I really like knobs. It's analog. It just works. Um, and the reason we're going to use the KBAC 27D is because it has the ability to both run 110 and 220. A lot of people don't have a 220 outlet in their garage or workshop. They only have a 110 outlet. Yes, this VFD is a little bit more expensive because you're paying for all of these conveniences. But if you were to spec out what it would cost you to have an electrician come out to your workshop and run a 220 outlet, uh, you would find that this is actually a really great alternative. So you're really going to get best of both worlds. And here's the best part. At some point, if you do upgrade your workshop to 220, you can, in fact, change the jumper back and rewire this thing and allow it to run on 220 single phase power. So this, in my opinion, is my preferred setup for running a 2x72 belt grinder. A lot of guys actually use this same setup uh, to run knee mills and all kinds of things. And when I tell these folks who are not really super familiar with this newer technology that KB Electronics has come up with, which is variable frequency drives that, that can upscale 110 single phase to three phase 220. They are blown away by that. And in fact, even some guys are like, wow, 223 phase. And it, it can, uh, it can uh, do, um, or 220 single phase can upscale to 223 phase. They're even blown away by that. And that's because for the longest time, you had to have a phase converter to do this kind of work. Well, this VFD does the phase conversion for you, and it allows for frequency changes, which will ultimately allow you to change the speed of the motor. A lot of this sounds like Greek to you, I'm assuming right now, but it will all make sense. In, a, in about another 15 minutes, you're gonna go, wow, it's all clicking in for me. The key factors here are that if you have a standard 110 outlet, which is like most 90% of everybody's workshops all have a standard 110 single phase outlet, and you wanna run a variable speed motor in your workshop, whether it be for a mill, a two by 72, a grinder, whatever, you can do it using this setup. All right, so that's the, uh, the key factors 
then as to why this is my preferred setup because it's just simply so flexible. All right, so let's get into the supplies you're gonna need. The wire is a big one I get a question about all the time. And you need uh, two different types of wire. You need 14-4, and this is S-J-O-O-W, all right? So you can, you can find this at a Home Depot or a Lowe's, uh, S-J-O-O-W. It's flexible uh, wire that has basically four different colored wires on the inside, and it is 14 gauge. That's why it's called 14-4. The other piece of wire you need is 14-3, and this one is considered S-J-O-O-W as well. And that just means it's flexible, it's 14 gauge, and it has three different colored wires in it. Uh, that can, this, this is what you're gonna use for your 220 setup. That and a 220 plug. This is a 50 amp 220 plug, which most households have if you're running a welder or something in your workshop. A 50 amp 220 plug is my preferred just because you, it's pretty flexible. It's probably not up to code. Just be aware that if you really wanna be up to code standards, you're gonna to have to wire in a different plug outlet with a different amperage and all of that. However, I like flexibility and that's why I use this particular outlet. Now, if you're going the 110 route, you can just get a simple 110 six foot long power cord that's basically a 110 plug on one end and then it's the open three wires on the other end. And this one is uh, rated for 13 amps I think the gauge on this is 16, so it's a 16.3. This falls within the amperage rating for the VFD. These VFDs, I think, pull between six and nine amps maximum, so you're really not, um, you're not even getting close because this will do 13 amps total at 125 volts. So again, all of this stuff is readily, readily available on Amazon, and I'm gonna put links down in the description so that you can find all of this stuff. Every single thing I'm talking about here, you're gonna be able to buy it on your own. Or if you wanna buy the wiring and all the little doodads that make this all work, including the glands, the wire nuts, the crimped on ends and all that, I have a wiring kit available for the KBAC 27D on my website, housemade.us. So you can buy it and you can select 220 or 110 and I'll ship it to you and you don't even have to think about it. You just watch this video and wire it up. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna use is a wiring diagram. This wiring diagram came from Dan over at DC Knives. This is the best visual representation of how this wiring situation works because once you open up this motor and you see all the wires that are on the inside, you're gonna go, you know, there's not a lot of colors in there and there's T numbers and all this stuff. This wiring diagram that Dan put together, uh, DC Knives, he's a, he's a friend of mine, he's an awesome guy. This is the best rep visual representation. It covers both 220 and 110. In the wiring kit that I send you, you're gonna get uh, a link that will take you th to this so that you can pull it up on your phone or your computer when you're doing your own wiring, you can actually get this. Or again, I will leave a link down in the description so that you can find this wiring diagram and you can follow along with the video and it'll make a ton of sense to you. The other things you're gonna need are some crimp on, crimp -on connectors, okay? And th that's just to simply plug everything in on the inside of the VFD. And then we're gonna use some dust proof glands. I get these on Amazon. These are just a simple dust proof gland. They're half inch uh, and they're designed to allow the, the cable to run through it, to connect into the VFD and the motor and to create a dust proof seal. You need some wire nuts and that's pretty much it for the supply side of things. Now, if we look at the tools, a few select tools here, nothing crazy, wire stripper, a razor blade I like to have on hand another version of different wire strippers here. I've got a screwdriver. That's, this is a Klein, uh, Klein tool screwdriver that's got all the different choices on it, like the flathead and Phillips head. Those are indispensable. A crimper and a heat gun. All right, so all of these tools, again, I'm gonna put links down in the description so you can find them. Most of these things you have in your workshop already, I, would, I assume. The heat gun, you don't necessarily have to have a heat gun like I just use a paint stripper that I got at a garage sale for a few bucks. Um, you don't have to have anything like that. You could actually use a blowtorch if you want. I prefer hot air versus fire because I don't like fire very much. Um, so I just prefer the hot air, but you can do it with a lighter, you can do it with a blowtorch, all kinds of different things. But yeah, so those are the tools that you're gonna need. 
All right, so first and foremost, let's talk quickly about the wire. Like I said earlier, 14 gauge, both of them. One has three wires in it, one has four wires in it. And how you determine the length is the one with three wires is gonna be the one that goes from your wall outlet to your VFD. Now, if you're going the 110 route, this is kind of predetermined for you, six feet. You can buy these 10 feet, 15 feet, whatever. Um, these are already pre-made. But if you're going 220, you're gonna use this SJOOW stuff. 14 gauge, 14 three, and you're gonna to wanna to cut this to length. So if you want to roll around your tool, whatever you're hooking up, make sure you give yourself ample length to do so. The other piece is the 14.4. So it's gonna go from the VFD itself to the motor. And most likely those two devices are gonna be very close to each other. So you're really only gonna need three, four feet. That's why we have this short little span. Um, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to give ourselves uh, some, we're going to strip this black shielding off. I'm using this Jonard Tools. This is a little bit of an overkill, all right? You may not need something like this. I do a lot of wire stripping, and the reason I like this is because it's spring-loaded, and it won't let you nick the wires on the inside. So um, you, of course, can do this with a razor blade, which is why I showed you that earlier. You're just going to want to really be careful that you do not nick the shielding on the inside. And the shielding, what I'm talking about, is the colored stuff on the inside of this. So with this guy, I'm just going to take it, extend it, put it over it, and I'm going to nest it in there. And then I'm just going to spin it around a couple times, undo it, and that gave me the perfect a perfect strip all right so on the inside of this thing you can see there's some uh, little brown paper sleeves in here and those are protectors and they kind of keep everything um, nice and tight on the inside cut those off and leave those and sticking out I kind of do this uh, because I know that one end is going in the VFD and the other one is going in the motor about two, two and a half inches, all right? Uh, there isn't an exact number for this, about two, two and a half inches. Then I'm gonna take my little yellow wire strippers here, these guys are great, and I'm gonna strip off about a quarter of an inch and expose the copper on each one of these. All right, and we're gonna wash, rinse, and repeat, do the exact same thing three more times on both sides of each one of these, all right? Okay, so all of our wire is stripped down to the shielding here, and I even took some time and twisted together the, the copper on each one. That will assist us when we go to put the crimped ends on later. And remember, you don't need three of these wires. If you're doing 110, you're gonna have this guy, which is, again, you can get it from me or you can get it from Amazon. There's links down in the description. And those are already stripped, okay? You don't even have to think about that. That's already done for you. Uh, if you're going 110, that's what you need. If you're doing 220, which is what we're gonna show you first, uh, it's a, the exact same wiring configuration. It's just, it's just that we have to put our own plug end on this wire. So this is the 14.3, and we're gonna add the 220 outlet, uh, the 220 plug end on there, and that is, uh, Again, you can get this on Amazon. They're inexpensive. They're about uh, $12, $15. $15. I have seen versions of this that have a fourth uh, plug on it. I don't understand why that's there. Maybe someone can help me uh, down in the comments. Some dryers and other appliances use that. Uh, but in our case, we're gonna use just two hots and a ground. So that's why we have three wires. 220 power is extremely easy to understand, okay? It is literally two 110 legs that are out of phase of each other and a ground. That is it. That's why you have three wires here. The phases you don't really need to fully understand, okay? Um, it's, it's really just a means to deliver the power to the VFD. The VFD handles the phase conversion. And also the breaker is what is putting those uh, phases out of sync. So just understand that it's two hots, 110 hots, and a ground so it's very very simple all right very simple and easy to use so this plug we're going to take it apart and we're going to wire up the white and the black to these two uh, connectors here 
and then the ground, which is the green, to this connector right here. All right, so we've got everything wired in nice and snug. We're gonna tighten all these screws down and close up this plug. Okay, we got our fancy dancy 220 whip all put together. And again, we, we just made a 220 version of this plug end. So if you're waiting for the 110, I have uh, links down in the description for timestamps. So if you wanna move on to the 110 wiring, you can. But uh, yeah, so this is the plug that is going to plug into the wall, and this side is going to go into the VFD. Now, in order to make that happen, uh, we've got to, let's grab the VFD. And we've got a couple of choices down here uh, where we're going to route the wiring in. And this one is a half inch, and this one is a half inch. This one is three quarter. We're going to use both of the half inch plug holes because that's what our glands are uh, meant to go into. So we're going to remove this one. We're going to plug this one up, okay, because we want it sealed from dust. And then we're going to put uh, glands in both of these two holes. Now, here's a pro tip. This is really tough to fit into this hole. But if you use your heat gun and you warm it up, it actually fits in there really easily and uh, it'll seat down in there. All right, so now we're gonna take our glands. We're gonna take and insert it, thread it end in, and spin on the other side to tighten it down. Fancy, fancy, fancy. I like it. All right, on the inside of the K-Bag, you'll be able to see you've got your terminals here where everything gets wired up. L1 and L2 are where the two hots from the wall come in and these are going out to the motor. So it's fair to assume that the wiring that we just, the whip that we just made up is going to get threaded through this gland and then we're going to hook it up to these two and there's a little spot right here for a ground. Okay, so we got our wires all up and we now need to connect them to these terminals down here. And the way I like to do that is I use these, these little crimp on connectors, okay? And these are specific to the screw size here. So you're really gonna wanna buy the ones that I am showing you here. And there'll they'll be a link down in the description or they'll be in the kit. And then you also need a ring terminal for the ground. Okay, and that'll make sense in a minute because we're going to use one of these screws down here. But uh, yeah, you need a ring terminal. And these are kind of special, all of these, because they have heat shrink tubing built right into them, which I love because it adds an additional layer of structural integrity to the crimp. So the black and the white get the two blue connectors and the green gets the ring connector, which is yellow. All right, so now we're going to shrink these using some heat. Look how fancy those connectors are. Easy, easy, easy. All right, so according to our wiring diagram, you can see here, L1 is black. L2 is white, and then ground to ground, all right? Super easy, so let's do that. And you have this little green terminal down here, and that's where the ground will go. All right, look at that pro job. Last thing we're gonna do, tighten down this gland and it's gonna seal that hole and everything around that cable, make it dust free. Congratulations, you just wired power up to the actual VFD. Now we're gonna move on to the connections from the VFD to the motor.
All right, let's take a quick gander at our wiring diagram that Dan made for us. So super helpful. You'll see a U, V, and a W. U is red, V is black, and W is white. They correspond with U, V, and W right on the board. Makes it so simple, so stupid simple. And of course, we have our, our, our wiring whip already made up, and we're going to fish that through. Get it into the machine itself. Give us a little extra slack, pull it through. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on these wires that we did on L1 and L2 in the ground. We're gonna put uh, the, uh, the crimp on connectors on these and the ground again is the only one that gets the ring connector, okay? Let's do that real quick. Okay, so now we got all our crimped ends on. We are going to use the wiring diagram to double check to make sure our colors are correct. So U goes to red, V goes to black, and W goes to white and the green, which is ground, goes to the ground screw in this bottom corner. Look at that professional wiring job. Fantastic, it looks great. And that is all the internal wiring on the K-back unit. We can go ahead and close the lid and seal it up. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've accomplished so far. We have a 220 plug that is wired into this side of the VFD, L1 and L2 and ground on the inside. And we have this wire, which is the 14-4 going into the K-back unit uh, on, that's plugged into U, V, W, and the ground. And now we just have this whip laying around wondering where do we hook this guy up? Well, we're going to hook it up to the motor. We have a little prep work to do before we can hook this guy up into the motor. We need to take one of these knockouts out uh, in order to put our our gland in. So there's a couple of spots here where you can actually knock out uh, this little piece of metal and there's going to be this dust proof gland that goes in place. You want to kind of do this strategic so you want to kind of figure out where your motor is going to sit on your on your grinder. In my case I prefer the wiring whip to come in on the back. Uh, there is one on the side you can do it over here. I just prefer it on the back that's just my personal preference. Wherever you want to put it, you can put it. So let's go ahead and knock this out and put in our dust gland. All right, that was easy enough. And let's go ahead and take this cover off. All right, let's install our dust gland. These are the exact same ones that we use on the VFD. All right, this goes right there. Twist that up. And let's find the other end of our wire here. We're going to fish this through. And this particular one, only one of these is going to get a crimp on connector, and that is the ground. Okay, and we're going to put a ring connector on that. The rest of these, the other three, those are just going to get twisted up to these wires right here. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, wow, that is a lot of wires in that motor. Uh, and you only have three in your other hand. So what's going on with that? And all will be revealed. It's actually quite simple. It looks intimidating. Don't worry about it. Look at the wiring diagram. Each one of these wires has T numbers on it. Okay. And those T numbers are labeled really well. And what you're, we're going to do is we're going to twist a bunch of them together and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, wire it up to the actual whip. All right, so now we got our, our ring terminal connected to our ground. We're gonna grab our, 
our wiring diagram and we're going to read the T numbers and match them up to the T numbers that are on the wires. Okay. And there's three that actually just get twisted together and that is T4, T5, and T6. So in this case, T4, T5, and T6 are these three right here. So we're going to go ahead and just put a wire nut right on those three because there's not much else to do. And that's done. So three of those wires are already accounted for. Okay, so now we've got, uh, let's see, I'm going to make reference here to um, T4, T5, and T6 are all bound together with just a wire cap, okay? And then the, we're going to go right down the line and find the other wires that go, that correspond with our whip that we made. And I'm going to start with white. So on the wiring diagram, it says T3 and T9 are the two wires that get connected to white, okay? T3 and T9, in this particular case, is this orange color and this yellow and black. Now, one of the things I cannot stress enough is do not do this by color, okay? If you're following this diagram and you're like, well, my wires are, you know, this color and that color, that's not what this is about. Colors don't matter in this case. There are numbers, these T numbers, these little labels here, that correspond with the correct wires. If you do it by color, it will be incorrect, okay? Because uh, every motor is a little bit different, all right? So T3 and T9 get tied into white. So we're gonna go ahead, grab a wiring cap, twist cap, twist it onto there, and we are good to go on that one. And black gets T2 and T8. So let's find T2 and T8. So T2 and T8 get bound together and they get married to the black wire on our whip. And we have one wire left, and that is red, and that gets T1 and T7. So those should be the only two that we have left. T1 and T7 are the only two that we have left, so we're going to go ahead and twist those together and marry them to the red wire. Okay, so here we go. Got everything done but the ground. The ground actually gets... Uh, attached to the motor case down inside of the unit. Okay, so we've got all that wiring completed. You can shove it all back down in there. But before we put the cap on this thing, we're going to go ahead and tip it on its side, plug it in, and give it a test run. And the reason is, is we want to make sure that our little spindle spins in the correct direction. All right. Sometimes the phases are a little bit different in each installation and we may have to swap the hots. So if you hit forward and it runs backward, you know you got to swap the hots. All right, let's plug it in. And here we go. We're going to put it in zero on the dial. That's pretty important when you first start it up. Hit start, flip her up, and then dial it. Now you can see my particular unit is actually spinning in reverse. And I can tell that because it's spinning clockwise. In my application, the motor sits on the left-hand side of the grinder. So we want it to spin counterclockwise in order to go forward. So all we got to do to fix that is go to the motor and swap the black and white wires with the T wires. Unplug it first. Don't do this live. And then also, when you unplug it, run the power out of it completely and let all the lights go dim on the unit because there's capacitors in here that hold power. So just keep that in mind. 
Those lights have gone dim. I've drained the power. Actually, they're still blinking a little bit. You can see that there. And this is completely unplugged, by the way. So it is still blinking. Let's let all that power drain. There we go. All right. So let's go back into the motor itself and just swap the black and white wires. I've done this probably a hundred times and about half the time it's backwards. So no big deal. Okay, we got those hots swapped around. Let's go plug it in and see if it's spinning counterclockwise now. And it is, all right. So we can seal up the motor end of it and that would be the end of the video for you if you're wiring this to 220. And again, that is my preference to go to 220 with this thing because you get a full two horses out of this motor. Now, if we're, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna disconnect the 220 whip and we are going to plug in the 110 whip and move a jumper on the inside of this and it's gonna convert this thing, believe it or not, to a 110 single phase to run a 220 motor. All right, 223 phase motor, which is fascinating to me that this, this device can actually do that. Uh, but there is some minor manipulation that we have to do on the inside to this, move a jumper and all of that. So uh, yeah, let's seal this up and call it good. If you're running 220, that's the end of the show. If you wanna see how to wire it to 110, keep watching. Okay, so if you wanna wire this motor to 110, single phase, this part of the video is for you. Uh, you can watch the other half of this where we, we timestamp down in the description where you're wiring from the VFD to the motor. That's all you really need to know for, this, for that part of it. And now we're going to actually put in the 110 uh, whip. So this is really simple. The wiring diagram actually has the 110 layout as well. White goes to L2, black goes to L1, and the ground. And we're going to put... Um, crimp on connectors to these uh, wires that came with this this fancy little uh, plug-in that we got on Amazon and again I can't stress this enough um, make sure that you do not have anything plugged in while you're doing this um, and that you're being safe at all times okay so just make sure that you understand electricity if you don't and this is intimidating to you please understand that uh, an electrician could probably do this in his sleep so just uh, you know if you need to hire an electrician Otherwise, let's continue on and move forward. All right, so let's take our 110 whip and fish it through the dust gland that we installed earlier. The ground gets a ring connector and the black and the white, they both get this just uh, slip on U connector. Or horseshoe or whatever it's called, I don't remember. I have CRS. All right, so we got our ring terminal on ground and we've got these uh, slip-on crimp connectors on white and black. And we're gonna go ahead and put them in the corresponding uh, colors. So it's L1 is black. And L2 is white. L1 is black, L2 is white, and the green is the ground. Look at that, looks good. We have one more step we gotta take before we can plug this into the wall though, because the K-back unit, it comes pre-configured for 220. And you can see there's a uh, small jumper right here, white cable, 230 volt. And then this right here says 115. It's a little hard to read, but 115 right there, okay? We need to move that little wire over to this jumper. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, push it down onto the 115 jumper, and there you go. 
Now you're ready to plug it into a 110 source. Let's close the box, seal it up. So check it out. We have a standard 110 plug. We've got our K back unit hardwired into a 223 phase motor. Let's plug it into a standard 110 extension cord. See what happens. We're all lit up. Let's go ahead and hit start and turn the dial. Look at that. So a couple key takeaways. I've done this a bunch of times, so this is me just imparting my advice on the process is to buy quality gear, all right? There's a lot of different options out there available uh, if you wanna do this kind of setup. The only one that I know of that'll upscale single phase 110 to three phase 220 is the K-Back 27D, okay? That's the only one I know of. I'm sure there's others out there and maybe that's the case. And if you find one, let me know. You can put it down in the comments. I'd love to know about it. But this, for the money, I think that this is the really great deal because it gives you flexibility and options if you don't have 220 in your workshop. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, the, the motors that are available on the market right now, there's uh, uh, probably a hundred different models that fit this exact same specification. So, you know, do some digging. You can find some different deals out there. Uh, this particular motor right now is going for about 220 if you can find it in stock. And this VFD is about 350 to $400, depending on where you buy it. For that amount of money and that amount of flexibility, what you get is a ton of low end torque and a super powerful variable speed powertrain. You just cannot do that for that kind of money anywhere else. I mean, if you look around, you'll, you'll know that this is an awesome deal. So to be able to do this makes a ton of sense. So uh, I won't have that conversation about single phase 110, variable speed, all of that. For my application, a single phase motor is is just off the table. This is the best way to do it. And I'm, I'm, you know, when I first started this journey of understanding motors, variable speed drives, all of that, I was using DC power and open motors. And eventually, of course, buy once, cry once, I went to a totally enclosed motor, fan cooled to three phase 220 to like a K-back unit because I just wanted my machines to work. That was just super important to me. I couldn't cheap out anymore. I really wanted my machines to just run and run reliably and well and efficient. So that's why I developed this system to make it work. So listen guys, if you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. There's many ways to support my channel and by far the best way is to go to my website, housemate.us and buy pieces, parts, and plans for the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project. It's what supports my workshop and my life and everything else. This is what I do for a full-time job. So uh, that's a great way to support me. There's buy me a coffee, there's Patreon. You can uh, support me by just leaving a comment and liking the video. Those are all great ways to support my channel as well. So thank you so much, guys. I truly appreciate all you do for me. Uh, I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been housemade.